So here's a quick rundown of the ingredients that you'll need for both recipes. To make the quince, the red quince marmalade, and we're going to get the red from the slows, you'll need a pound of or about 450 grams of quinces, which you will need to, to peel and core and um, quarter. You will also need about a pint of or around 20 fluid ounces of slows and you'll need around 450 grams or a pound again of sugar and also plenty of water at hand. Now to make the quince cakes you'll just need again a pound or 450 grams of the quinces again peeled and quartered and cored as you can see there's a a lovely old um, ancient uh, fruit cora there made of wood and bone but I don't suggest using that I think maybe just use something modern in the kitchen it's a lot quicker and so you'll just need your quinces for the quince cake 450 grams 450 grams again of sugar and lots of extra sugar for sprinkling those cakes after they've dried in the oven. So there you go. Very simple ingredient to make some yummy, tasty, historic food. So I've got my pound of quinces peeled, pared, chopped and soaked and now I just add, need to add them to the pound of sugar which I am weighing out here with my lovely old trusty antique scales and that's a pound weight so we're nearly there and all I have to do is grind down this massive lump of sugar in this little pestle and mortar. Yes, so I'll see you in about two hours. beautiful rich ruby colour now which I'm just popping into the little pots Ooh, a bit messy didn't do that very well there we go look at that absolutely scrumptious let's just move that out of the way next lovely colour and it smells absolutely gorgeous got that very unique quince smell along with the lovely colour of the slows oops mess that up again a bit there we go and it goes should clean that up in a minute and then when these are done 
I just need to soak some papers in brandy and then we can seal them nicely and that will preserve them for quite a bit of time absolutely fantastic that looks delicious so the last part of this recipe is just to seal the little galley pots with some paper and as the recipe stipulates paper needed to back then be soaked in brandy and this is what helps preserve the marmalade keep it for a long time I think people probably don't realize just how much paper was used and has been used for hundreds of years to seal and preserve things just like we use and cook on and to hold things and wrap things in parcels this isn't a modern thing that we do with baking paper this is something that has been going on for centuries I'm not making a terribly great job of this and you might find that your paper wants to be a little bit bigger but I'm just doing this now just to demonstrate quickly what the process would involve and you can buy like old parchment and vellum online it's not a problem or you can probably try recycled paper a lot of paper then was um, simply made from bits of old rags and material that was recycled so there we go there's our little pots of marmalade and as I said you might want to use a little bit more paper than I have I've just put these over the top and then I'll deal with them later and then add some if you want to put a bit more paper on and then tie them around with a bit of string but hopefully you get the idea and they will be sealed for I don't know, a good amount of time I expect they'll last a good few weeks they probably would ordinarily last a good few months but I haven't done the best job but it does show you um, what you need to do um, as far as the recipe is concerned so there you go there is your red quince marmalade So the next part of the recipe requires a chafing dish and chafing dishes or braziers are ancient really. Um, in the basic sense it's any sturdy dish that was put over hot coals to cook things that needed a bit more direct contact with heat. So by the end of the Victorian era it had become quite an indispensable item from keeping food warm to cooking it directly at the table, dishes like hot creams or egg dishes. And this particular chafing dish, which belongs to me, uh, is around about turn of the 20th century. So it's silver plated. Um, and this was when a lot of chafing dishes were silver or silver plated and were really fashionable. Um, and they were kept at the table or on the side and if you have a look underneath they were heated by a little burner like that and that would keep things warm or gently cook them this is a very decorative one and sadly it's not in working order 
but the little cakes would have cooked on something like this. Well, probably something a bit more basic than this. Maybe an earthenware one. But yeah, there's your chafing dish. And now we'll go to the next part of the recipe, which is actually cooking up the cakes and shaping them into some sort of solid form before drying them in the oven. So I've added equal weight in sugar to the quince, just gently giving them a, a little stir, just heating them up before shape them into the cake shapes. Cake in the loosest sense of the word, remember? And dry them in the oven for the next stage of the recipe. Looking good, smelling delicious. Well, hopefully you haven't all fallen asleep after that and you've got a bit of inspiration for some new ideas to cook with quinces from some old recipes. If you like this film, please do like and subscribe to the channel and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. Just look for Museum of Kitchenalia. And if you are really into the history of food, which is great, um, I should reiterate that I am a postgraduate historian. I've got years of experience and I've worked in a lot of museums, some of the biggest and some of the smallest too. And I've got a whole pile of books that I've written about the history of food. And in the next slide, you will see a picture of all of those that are available, including two that are out next year. So yes, I've been very busy indeed. If you do want to buy the books, please do go to Amberley Publishing or Pen and Sword Publishing or Prospect Books or online for all those fantastic retailers online. And of course, in the high street, do support your high street for books and anything, basically. So uh, that's about it from me, really. And I uh, really hope to see you again next time for the next one. So for now, bye bye.